Hello, this is Mr. Perez. Welcome to the Module 5 Lesson 1 Exit Ticket titled The Area of Parallelograms Through Rectangle Facts. Uh, important here, rectangle facts. I touched briefly on this on the lesson uh, and really think about cutting these shapes. If I were to cut a parallelogram, I could always create a rectangle. Take a look at this parallelogram right here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the dotted line that's already there. If I were to cut off this triangle, this triangle right here, it happens to form a triangle shape. If I were to cut it off and I were to just slide it over, over there, it would actually look just like this, right? Imagine that other part is gone. Uh, just to really make sure we can see this. The new shape would have this old part that was already there, that would still be there, but then the rest of this would actually enclose to form a rectangle. Now notice that green section is just your standard run-of-the-mill rectangle. Uh, and in this rectangle, the base actually stays the same length. This 20 is the base of that entire rectangle. And then this 10 is the side of the rectangle, the height. Uh, we would call it the width if we were using the words length and width. Uh, so this parallelogram has all the same measurements of a rectangle. We know how to find the area of a rectangle. So we're gonna go ahead and simply use that formula. Uh, if you recall, the formula for a uh, the area of a rectangle is area equals length times width. Uh, now, I don't wanna use length and width anymore. I actually wanna use base and height. It makes a lot more sense when we're talking about a parallelogram. So the base, number one, the base of this rectangle is 20 feet. The height of this rectangle, uh, sorry, parallelogram, I should say, is 10 feet. Uh, and we do simple multiplication there and we get 200 feet squared. The area of this parallelogram is 200 feet squared. Uh, question number two. This one, it's kind of harder to see how we could rearrange the shape and create a rectangle out of it. Trust me, it's still possible. It's just a little bit more complicated. Uh, but the idea here is if we know the most important information, which is the B base, and the h height, then we can solve the area of this parallelogram. Notice they give us lots of information, and one thing that students always do wrong here is they will count unnecessary information. That 15 has nothing to do with the parallelogram. The parallelogram is the solid lines, uh, not the dotted lines. This is that slanted side. Remember, we don't wanna count the slanted side, Question number one, I failed to mention 12. We don't need it. We just don't need it. Uh, the important information is what is the length of the base? The length of the base is five centimeters. The length of the height is 35 centimeters. Notice it's that perp perp perfect perpendicular line. It's going straight up and down. It is the height, 35 centimeters. Now let's do some math. Let's see, five times 35. Uh, is 175, I believe, uh, 175 centimeters squared. All right, last one. Uh, well, this one's really easy. As you can see, we have a base of seven, area equals base times height. We have a base of seven meters. We have a height of, is it two or is it three? Do not be fooled. Three is not the height. Two is the height because of this perfect straight up and down, perpendicular, 90 degree angle, two meters. Therefore, the answer 14 meters squared. Lesson one, the area of parallelograms through rectangle facts. Most important thing is to identify what is the base and what is the height. Do not be fooled. The height is not going to be the side of the parallelogram. The height is going to be perpendicular to the base. It's going to be perpendicular to the base, 
Right here is the base, and right here it is perpendicular, 90 degree angle, right? Right here is the base, and even though it's not touching the base, if we extended it, it is perpendicular, that is my height. If this is the base, then this is the height. On a scale of one to four, how did you do?